radiation therapy in the treatment of head and neck cancer. This is one of a series of cancer videos found on the website aboutcancer.com. The best advice in treating cancer can often be found on the website of the National Comprehensive Cancer Network. This can be accessed at nccn.org. The best advice for patients, however, is to have a team of doctors, particularly an experienced surgeon, radiation oncologist, and medical oncologist. The radiation oncologist should have access to state-of-the-art equipment, particularly IMRT, IGRT, or tomotherapy. Surgery or radiation is often used in early stages. Most patients with advanced cancer get a combination of chemotherapy and radiation or chemoradiation. In order for radiation to work, it needs to accurately target both the tumor and protect the normal structures. There's a need for high doses, there's a need for IMRT, and often a need for chemotherapy. At the time of the simulation, a face mask is made to stabilize the patient's head and neck. He then has a CAT scan and the images are pulled into the computer. And the physician contours or identifies both the cancer and the normal structures. A PET-CT may help target or fuse the cancer. And there are guidelines from the RTOG on how to contour the normal structures so that they can be identified and protected when the computer plan is generated. A typical digital reconstruction of a patient is shown here, two patients, one with a short neck and a long neck. Both have thyroid or tracheal cancer shown in red. Similar patients now with a digital reconstruction showing the skeleton. This patient had a small cancer in the larynx shown in red and the radiation cloud shown in yellow has covered the cancer area and avoided the salivary glands and the spinal cord. A patient with more advanced cancer shown here in red including lymph nodes again has a digital reconstruction and the radiation cloud shown in blue covers that area and avoids the salivary glands and the spinal cord. The doses of radiation required are quite high, seven weeks. Even patients who had surgery and received post-operative radiation generally require a high dose of radiation, usually six weeks. Studies show that the compliance of the physician to hitting the proper areas and the proper dose will result in lower relapses in the head or neck region. It's also been shown that using IMRT techniques will have lower side effects than conventional radiation. With tomotherapy, a CAT scan and a linear accelerator are combined so that a daily CT will be used to adjust the radiation, both identify the target and allow the radiation to be shrunk down or adapted as necessary. Here's a patient with a low-grade parotid tumor in red and a small radiation cloud in blue surrounding it. The cross-sectional view here on the tomo shows the radiation has not penetrated too deeply and has not hit the other side. Here's a patient with a tracheal tumor shown in the gray CT images and the blue CT tomo image shows this has shrunk down and opened up. Similarly, the blue CT on a nasopharynx cancer has shown that the tumor has opened up. Here the red cloud shown in the middle, the radiation is targeting the cancer accurately and the blue CT shows a good response. And similarly, on the left side of the panel, the gray CT shows a large tumor in the red radiation cloud and the blue CTs from TOMO show the tumor is shrinking down and the radiation field can be adjusted. Chemotherapy is often combined either cisplatinum or targeted drugs such as Herbitux. Randomized trials show adding Herbitux to radiation improves the cure rates and adding chemotherapy such as cisplatin has been shown in randomized trials to improve the outcome. High dose chemoradiation now gets cure rates in the 60 to 80 percent range even for advanced head and neck cancers that were previously incurable. And in patients who are HPV positive non-smoking, the cure rate with chemo radiation is particularly high. And again, cisplatin may be even more effective than Herbitux, and all these combinations are currently under study. With chemo radiation, the tumor may respond quickly. This tonsil cancer was almost gone by two and a half weeks, and by four weeks was invisible, the effects of chemo radiation. Here's a PET-CT confirming a tongue cancer has disappeared by three months and the PET-CT is back to normal. Similar PET-CT showing a good response with tonsil cancer, a good response with piriform sinus cancer with a large right lymph node in the neck, 
a large cancer in the left tonsil base of tongue area, gone, and a large nasopharynx cancer on the right side, gone with chemo radiation. Similarly, a large lymph node metastases gone. Unfortunately, radiation to the head and neck has considerable side effects related to the structures that are in the way, particularly the mandible or the jawbone and the parotid. The internal structures are shown here that will be affected, including the teeth, the throat, and the salivary glands. All of these will have side effects. This main side effect, short term, sunburn, skin effect, dry mouth, change in taste, sore throat, eating problems, pain management, laryngitis, and fatigue. Some patients need a feeding tube to get through the radiation and the chemo to avoid dehydration. Radiation dermatitis or sunburn, almost everyone gets this to some degree in the neck. This generally heals up fairly quickly and should have no significant long-term effects on the skin. This is two to three months and this within three weeks. The inside of the mouth gets inflamed significantly. This is called mucositis. It inflames the mucous membrane lining. Again, this will heal up to some degree within two or three weeks, but can take months to heal properly. This patient has significant mucositis in the tongue. Again, by two months, much better. By 10 months, much better. This patient had a large tonsil cancer. On the last day of treatment, the cancer was no longer visible. The mouth was quite inflamed. By three months, the inflammation is gone, and there's just a white scar where the cancer was originally. This patient had very marked mucositis of the tongue and was quite uncomfortable and needed pain medication. Again, within two or three months, the mucositis is healed, though her mouth is still dry and tongue still sensitive. Mucositis is common in the roof of the mouth or palate. It's also common on the underside of the tongue and the inside of the cheek as shown. There are long-term side effects of radiation. Sometimes the dryness is permanent. The saliva glands may not come back. The teeth are vulnerable to decay and the jawbone is vulnerable to osteonecrosis. Some patients have problems swallowing, hoarseness, low thyroid hormones, and even carotid stenosis. This is the same tonsil patient at three months and then 12 months. If you look closely, there is abnormal blood vessels called telangiectasia and the root of the mouth and the tongue is still dry even a year later. And by two years, the patient still had dryness and his taste was still off. Many patients have abnormal blood vessels or telangiectasia or discoloration in the roof of the mouth and more serious can be the effect on the teeth or the jawbone and the risk of osteoradionecrosis. There is evidence that patients who stop smoking have less side effects and better outcome, so they should be encouraged to stop. A support team is critical, particularly pain management, wound management, and dental care in the long run. All the details can be found on the website about cancer.com as well as other videos on head and neck cancer and links to other websites.